Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about binding data to our forms. So when you're binding data to your forms, this is typically called data binding, just for short. Now when you're, what you're trying to do with data binding is to take data from a form and store it into a table. But you could also be taking data from the table and displaying it on the form. Now when you're doing both of these things, that is what we call two-way data binding, where the form and the table are kind of uh, interlocked together so that when you make a change on one, it automatically updates the other one. That is two-way data binding. But there is something called one-way data binding, and that is where you're just doing one direction, right? You're either taking the data straight from the form and storing it in the table, and that's it, or you might be taking data from the table and displaying it on the form, but not allowing the user to edit it or change it. So both of those are just considered one-way data binding. But if you're doing both directions, if you're allowing the user to make changes and they're being stored to the table, and also what's on the table is being displayed on the form, that is what we call two-way data binding. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into our Access database and take a look at how we can bind our data to our forms. So here we're looking at the form that we created in a previous video. And we have our first name, last name, and comment inputs, as well as a submit button. So what we want to do in this video is to create a table that we can bind these values to uh, so that we can store all of the times that somebody submits a record in, uh, in this form. We want to be able to store that into our table. So how do we do that? Well, what we first need to do is create that table that's going to store the data. So I'm going to go click on the Create tab and then select Table Design. And of course, the first thing that I need is some sort of primary key field. So I'm just going to call this ID and set its type to Auto Number. Then I'm going to add the fields that correspond to the inputs of my form. So first name, last name, and comment. So I've got first name, short text is fine last name, and comment. Now let's go ahead and set this ID field as the primary key, just by right-clicking on the margin and then selecting primary key. And let's go ahead and save the table. So we'll save this as comments. Okay, so now that we have our table that's going to store the data, let's go ahead and close that down. And now I need to actually bind the form to the table. And when I, when I say bind the form, I don't mean each one of these individual inputs just yet. What I'm really talking about is the entire form. The whole thing needs to know which table it should associate itself with, right? So this could be a table or a query. I just want to make that clear. You can also bind a form to a query, but in this demonstration, we're just going to do it to a table. And we've got this comments table that we just created, and that's the one that we're going to pick. So how do we do that? How do we bind the form to a table? Well, up here in the upper left corner between the two margins where we see the rulers that go across and down the bottom, there's this square here that if we click on it, it will add a little black square inside of it, which means that we have selected the form. And in fact, you can see over here under the property sheet, we see selection type is form. We wanna make sure we are looking at the form to find then the data tab, and you'll see there's these tabs that go across, right? Format, data, event, other, all, et cetera. The one that we're looking for is this data tab. And where we have the data tab for the form, there is something called the record source. And the record source, we can click on the drop down and find our table, comments. So that is where we essentially bind the form to a table. And in this case, we've bound the comments table. Now you'll notice that this doesn't change anything about this unbound word that we see in each one of these inputs. That's because all that we've done is just bound the whole form, the form that is kind of backing these inputs, we've bound it to a table. But now we want to take each one of these inputs and bind it to one of the fields on that table. So we're going to select that input. In this case, it's the first name input. And then you'll notice that once again, over here under the data tab, 
on our property sheet for that text box, we'll see something called control source. And the control source has a drop down once again, but this time it's filled with the different fields that are available on the table that we bound the form to. So in this case, we're gonna select first name because that's what we wanna store this first name input for, right? So first name goes there. Then we're gonna say last name. Once again, click on this, say last name. And then for our comments, I'm going to select the control source of comment. All right, now some of you may be asking, well, wait a minute, what about this submit button? Well, to be honest with you, right now that submit button doesn't have any meaning or purpose whatsoever because this form is now two-way data bound to our data. So the data is being populated by access from the table directly. And anytime that we make a change to the values in one of these inputs, it will automatically in real time update that value to the table. Actually, to be more specific, it will change the data once we exit out of this input. So we can make our change and then exit out and then it updates it. But the idea is pretty, pretty much this, that once you make a change and then you exit out of that input field, it will automatically go to the database table and update that value that you entered. So this submit button is really kind of pointless at this, at this stage. I'm not gonna get rid of it just yet because there will be a reason for it in an upcoming video where we're gonna be talking about how to create forms that are not bound to tables. But for right now, we're just gonna leave it as it is and just move along here. So I've got my form ready to go. I've got my table ready to go. Let's go ahead and try to enter in some data. So I'm gonna go Steve Bishop, and this is a cool comment. Now, based upon that and what I told you before that once we exit out of all of these fields, then we should see this record being added to our comments table, right? Well, let's go take a look. So if I just double click and open it up, hmm, we are missing the record. What went wrong? Well, there's something that you should know about. This is a caveat that a lot of Access developers don't quite understand when they're first starting out. It's something that can definitely be a gotcha. And I've had experience, you know, wondering why certain things are happening. Uh, and this is definitely the case in a lot of times. The ID field is a required field. Right? We cannot have a record in the comments table without also having an ID. And so when we are binding a form to a table, any field that is required must also be a field on the form because it's required. So we need to go to our design view once again, and we need to add a field for our ID field. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to say design. We're going to add a new input here. Uh, I don't need the text box. If you wanted to, I could I could definitely add or, or leave the ID uh, as a visible value here, but I am going to take it off and, and I'll show you how to kind of hide this so that it's not visible on the form. But I do want to take this unbound here. And in fact, I don't even need to go over here to the control source and click on the dropdown. I know that this input should be bound to the I D. And so you can actually just type it right there. When you're in the design view of the form, you can just type in the name of the field you want to bind it to, and that's all you have to do. So you don't actually have to select it from the dropdown if you don't want to. But it obviously is really nice if you click on the dropdown because you know that you're going to get it right and you don't misspell something. Okay, so now we've got the ID field. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit, and I'll move this up here. In, let's move it to the upper left corner. And now let's take a look at the form. And you'll see that it gets populated with the ID of this current record. And once I've done that, you'll also notice now if I switch on this and I got to tab through all of this. Okay, so now it's updated, right? Each one of the fields has been touched and the values that are in there have been updated. And if we look at the comments section, oh boy, Steve, what happened here? Uh, where, where did it go? It should be, oh, maybe we just need to double click and Oh, reopen this. There we go. Okay, now it's showing. It was just kind of cached, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so now that we have made our changes on our form with that auto, uh, that, that ID field added to our form, it now goes ahead and saves it. So that's just one gotcha you need to be aware of. 
is once again, any field on a table that is required, and that of course includes our primary key fields. Yes, I'll go ahead and save that. Uh, those primary key fields that we have on our table, like the one that we have here for comments, right? This field must also be on our form. So that is why we had to add it here to my basic form. I had to add the ID field. Now you may be wondering, but what if I don't really want that to appear on the screen? I don't want the ID to show up. How do I fix that? Well, on each one of these inputs, you can actually make it so that it is invisible. We can actually hide it. So if we go over here to format, you'll notice that there is a visible property. And this visible property is currently set to yes. I can change this to no. And now this ID field will not be visible on the form, yet it will still contain the data of the ID. So if I go back here to the, the form view and I change it from Steve to Steve in, okay, then I can go take a look at my comments and you'll notice that uh, once again, it looks like it's cached. Let me close out of this. Yes, yes. Okay, so comments. Now you'll notice that it has Steve N. So it did, in fact, update my name to have the Steve N, and it was the correct one because it still knows that it was ID of one. So this is two-way data binding, where we are able to store data from a form and store it to a table. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about here is uh, what about moving back and forth between records? Because right now, what do I do if I want to add a new form? Or what if I want to make sure that it's always new? Uh, there's a couple of things that you can do. First and foremost, um, there are some default controls on an access form that we actually hid in a previous video. So if I go to right click on here and then go to design view, uh, you may remember, let me close the comments table. You may remember that when we were looking at the format of this form, we disabled the navigation buttons and the record selectors. The navigation buttons are, are a set of navigational controls that appear at the bottom of a form that allow you to go back and forth between the different records on a, on a, on a table or a query. So I'm going to change this from no back to yes. And if I go back to my form view, you'll notice that down here are my controls and I can move forward and backwards. So now if I move forward, you'll notice that Steve is no longer there. So I can add another one. Let's just do with uh, Jeremy Clark. Hi there. And now if we close this and go back to our table, Yes, I want to save the changes to the design. Go back to comments. Now you'll see that Jeremy is there. And if we once again reopen the form, I can click back and forth. You'll notice that there are records now one of two. If I click forward, we'll see Jeremy Clark. Hi there. So you can go back and forth through these by clicking on these buttons. That's a very quick way of adding it. And by the way, if you want to add a new record, you could just click on this new blank record button here. And that will go and create a new record where you can go ahead and add things, add a new record. Uh, and under our comments table, it doesn't show up anything there until you actually start filling it in. Uh, but let's say that we don't want to do that, right? Let's say that we want to add our own buttons to this. So uh, I'm just going to kind of move this down. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and hide the submit button. I, I don't need it right now. It's not one that I really care about. It's going to be something that we're going to tackle again a little bit later in another video. But for now, I'm just going to leave submit off of the screen when the form appears. And let's go ahead and add another button here. And this is where uh, typically I avoid things like macros, but it should be something that you are aware of. And when I say macros, I don't mean sometimes people call VBA macros, uh, you know, any sort of uh, subroutines or function calls. Sometimes they call those macros. But I really mean macros in terms of how Access talks about macros. So you can actually create a, uh, a new button. Uh, it's under design here. I'm going to add a button here. And I'm just going to, you'll notice that when I do drop this button on here, you'll notice that essentially all of those navigational buttons that we saw at the bottom appear as actions we can add to this button. 
So we have record navigation, which is again, the navigation, the navigational buttons that we saw down at the bottom. You can select record navigation and then any one of those buttons that was at the bottom of the form, you can select any of those actions to perform when the button is clicked. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, find next and that should be fine or go to, or actually go to next record. That's the one I wanna, I wanna do here. So next, uh, so we can just leave the defaults here. Um, go, to, go to next is the text that it wants to have. We could also do a right arrow if you wanted to do just the button uh, or we can use, actually it is a picture. So the go to next picture or the arrow right picture or you can use the text that says next record. Um, we'll just go ahead and do go to next, that's fine. Next, and then I need to give this button a meaningful name. Um, so we'll just go next record and finish. And now adding that button and let's go ahead and add another one here just to do one more so you can see uh, how we do this. Add another button. This is gonna be record navigation. Go to previous record this time so we can go back. And yeah, I'll just use this, the, the defaults and previous record and finish. All right, so now there are our two buttons that can be added to the form. Again, I hid the submit button so you won't see this on the form, but we will have these two buttons. And if we go and take a look at it in the form view, we can click on these buttons to go back and forth between each one of the records. So we can add our own controls to the actual form to simulate all of the same controls that we have down here at the bottom so that you can take that, uh, take those controls off of the screen if you don't like them, kind of like I do. I, I really don't like these navigational buttons at the bottom. So let's just take those off. Take a look at the form view. And now those navigational buttons are bottom are gone at the bottom, but I can click back and forth to add or uh, or I can add new records or I can skip back and forth between current records. So there you go. That is how you can do uh, data binding on a form and you can add these little con button controls to the form that allow you to navigate back and forth between each one of the records on the form. I'd like to thank these members for their continued support of this channel. Without your con contributions, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.